In class we've been discussing general linear models and multiple regression models. And general linear models give us this opportunity to combine categorical data and continuous data to predict a continuous outcome. Here we have a paper by Cathy Karlstad, who does a lot of really influential zoo research, looking at the key per elephant re relationships in zoos. What they have done is carried out a, a survey um, taking cortisol from elephants from twice a month for a year over hundreds of elephants and they've surveyed keepers as to their own personal attitudes to things like job satisfaction also the keepers have recorded and given a profile of the behavior of those animals and there's some additional information as well and if we just fast forward to table six just to see where how this data is presented let's go all the way down here there we go. We have the results of the African and Asian elephants in a table rather like I've been discussing in class. So here we have the variables on the left. So we have um, cortisol. So here we have the mean serum cortisol of the African and Asian elephants, and they are predicted by a number of things that have remained in the model. We'll talk about model selection another day. Um, so here we have male and female elephants. So here female elephants is the reference category excuse me and um, male is the one that gives the coefficient so here the beta coefficient um, is some we've been calling coefficient as well here we have the intercept which we often call the constant and here we can see that males are associated with greater cortisol than the female here we've got imported versus captive born and captive born is the reference category and those animals that have been imported have less cortisol concentration influence indicating a, a improved welfare or perhaps a, a better um, a lower response to stress or even that they're just less active we're not actually sure of the interpretation of the cortisol but they're this is the nice table given this and if we go over to this side we can see although that um, sex wasn't significant this origin of the elephant is verging on significant we call that a trend and then underneath we have three continuous variables that came out um, based on scores given by keepers that were associated significantly with cortisol so the keepers reporting positive interactions with elephants that keepers allow the elephant to interact with the public and the elephants show positive behavior so increased levels of affiliative behavior were all increased with a reduction the minus sign indicates a reduction in the mean cortisol levels and all three of those how are significant as indicated by the individual p-values these are individual um, t statistics for the overall model here we have the coefficients, here we have the standard errors, and here we have the 95% confidence intervals. Elsewhere would be reported how um, the R squared, or even the adjusted R squared, represents the total model fit, and we would also have a p-value for that overall model. That's not presented here. Here we have some data for a simple general linear model exercise. We've got 19 finishing pigs of two different breeds, land race and large white. We have males and females. But what we're actually interested in is predicting their back fat. So we want to see how much fat they have. And we're using those two first factor-based variables and also a more continuous one, condition score, to make this prediction. So it's very simple, we're going to select all the data, we just click there and then Excel, we can just press Control A, gets all the data, and then we're going to copy that, and we're going to take it to Genstat. So in Genstat, this is Genstat 20, it's still spread, new, from clipboard, and we'll set as active sheet just by default, press OK, and there's our data. Variable condition score, it's not quite sure what it is, so yes, we want to leave that as a variant. Yes, we don't just want that data. So here's our data set in there. We've got our factors labeled accordingly. If we hadn't put that in, of course, we could just right click and convert to factor just there. So I'm just going to set up a very simple general linear model. So we go to stats, go to regression analysis, and at the top are the linear models. Notice how many others there are there too. 
and with this one we're just going to go we could do simple uh, multiple regression with groups but we're just going to go for the general linear regression where we could put everything in this framework so we're going to have back fat as our response variable we're going to have a model to be fitted i'm not going to fit the interaction terms so if i was going to put an interaction term i would put breed first and then i would put the little multiplier the star and sex and that would be breed plus sex plus the interaction between those two variables because i'm not going to include the interaction terms i'm just going to use the plus operator between them so that's just going to look at the main effects so i'm going to look at main effects of breed and sex and our main one of condition score where to go to the options because i'm also interested in the confidence intervals to include them in the table same as we saw on kathy Carlston's paper press ok i'm going to press run and here we have the output so it starts at the biggest blue writing on the dotted line and there's our output there so here we have our model and at the top of the analysis is the ANOVA table exactly the same as the analysis of variance and here we can see that the overall model is significant and it's significant at 0.004 in explaining the data and here the percentage variance accounted for which is GenStat gives an adjusted R squared value is 50.2%. So that's explaining quite a lot of the data. Here we have our parameters. So in GenStat we have the estimate, which is the equivalent of the coefficient or beta coefficient. And here we have the constant, which is the equivalent of the intercept in that previous paper. So we need to take these information here and put them all into a table. So I'm going to copy that copy and then I'm going to open up a document with a table in it so we're just going to paste the data in here just for convenience Ooh. I'm going to try and make it bigger and bigger so we can see it all there we go so the data we want first is everything from this parameter table so in our um, table here we have our variables so we have our breed we have our sex we have the condition score and here it's all set up with those reference values so the constant value there the coefficient for the constant which we need for any prediction equation is 2.63 it's that one there so i'm going to copy that and put it now the ones with italics are the reference values, so I can just put in a, a dash. Some people put a zero, but a dash would do it. Here to demonstrate that that's the reference category. And here the breed, the coefficient for large white is minus three. So I'm going to put that there. Again, female is the reference category, so a dash, but male, the coefficient, sex male is 1.09. So they're slightly fatter. And here, condition score on 0 to 5 scale. Here, for each step in the scale, the, the amount of fat increases by 5.62 millimeters, which is told there. So we can put that in at that point. Okay. So there are the coefficients. And in a similar way, the standard errors would go here. We ignore this column we could include it but it's not needed we have the t probabilities that gives our p-values for this column and then underneath are the two sets of confidence limits the lower and upper 95 percent confidence intervals so we can put them there and there so let's fill those in quickly and we're back let's have a look at this table then i've filled in all the values um, We've got a nice title, so multiple regression model to predict back fat, our outcome variable, in millimetres. That's very important to include the unit of the finishing pigs and from our various um, categories and variables. So condition score, sex and breed. So there's a few more things to include. So down the bottom here, we have this little note one. So this is for the whole model. For the model significance, we have a p-value and we get that, as we said before, from up here so this value here 
is our p-value of 0.004 and this applies to the whole regression model. So we would put that down there. It's not always included, but I think it's good practice to do so. And then the adjusted R squared in GenStat comes from here. Is this percentage variance accounted for? So this is a percentage. We would want that as a decimal proportion. So here, the adjusted R squared is 0 0.50, or it might be 0 0.502. Yeah. Here we have this little note for confidence interval because we've um, shortened it in our table here. And that is your overall table for a general linear model. Just to finish off, we're back to Excel. There's no point in having a, a model like this if we're not going to use it. So we're going to just make one single prediction from this model. So I've got these terms, the breed, the sex, and the condition score to explain back fat. So the prediction I'm going to test today is what would you predict the back fat to be of a large white pig that is female of condition score equal to 2? And the answer to that is all up here in the table. So here, what we put in first is we put in equals to activate the function. And then we're going to add the appropriate coefficients together. So the constant here is 2.63. So we're going to put that in. And we're going to add here. It's a large white pig. So land race with the reference. So we need to add this one. It's a minus figure, but that doesn't matter. We're going to add minus 3. And then here, the next one's a bit more tricky. It's a female pig. So we've got a coefficient for the male, but not for the female. So we can leave that at zero. I'm just going to add nothing, just to make that clear. Of course, that's not necessary. Yeah. So because she's the reference, we don't add anything from that part. And then here we've got the condition score. Now the condition score is 5.62, but that is based on what is the condition score. So because the condition score is 2, we're looking for 2 multiplied by that coefficient, 5.62. And if we press enter, we find the prediction to be 10.87. So a large white female of condition score 2 is expected to be 10.87. We could even have worked out the lower and upper confidence intervals if we wanted to. And we know that that's going to be right approximately 50% of the time from our model fit. And that's what we can do with a general linear model. Thank you for watching.